Things are going quite well for the Sharks following our one-off season <laughs> rebuild. Of course, we blew things up at the draft, free agency, we build things up. It's a little bit artificial on the defensive side, but things are looking good enough to the point where we are yet again competing for a division title, and we left the last episode on the question of what do we do with this team because the depth is decent, and decent enough that once Joachim Blickfeld comes back, somebody's got to be the odd man out. Here's the issue. Some of you still really want Cole Sillinger to be given an opportunity, and considering we're winning, I'm good with that. It then becomes the question, though, of, okay, if we're good enough to just run this team as it is, who sits or who leaves the team because somebody has to, or at least someone has to sit, and if not, and we do decide to go out and get an improvement, who will it be? It'll obviously be a top six winger, and Cole Sillinger will be sent down to junior for the rest of the year, more than likely. So this is a huge month upcoming, January into February, where a lot of players are playing for their spots on this team, even though we're winning. Again, Blickfeld's back in a week, I do believe, so we have four games between now and then for a lot of these guys, as David Posternock is going to miss the month. Well, that solves the issue over who gets taken out of the lineup, but now, now is going to be a very interesting time. Now, Marcus Sorensen, he, you know what, Marcus Sorensen wasn't that good. Was there anybody else I wanted to call up here? Yes, I'm aware of game, God damn it. So let me change that. Do we want to call anybody up? So, I mean, the, the question of who sits when Blickfeld's back is pretty straightforward. Pasta's not going to be in the lineup. Was there anybody else? I mean, I'm intrigued by the likes of David Cotton, Max Latunoff. And again, we have a lot of guys who are NHL caliber. I don't think I want to call up Ellison or Foodie yet. They're going to spend the full season in the AHL, uh, Heinen as well. Zach Gallant could be called up, but I don't exactly want to break up the fourth line. We're going to go with Sorensen. I want to leave all the other lines the same and see who can potentially carve out that spot and who's going to stay out of the group that we have. So, kind of sucks, but Marcus Sorensen goes on to the top line. Not ideal, but we're doing what we have to do for now. And, yeah, he'll be given a decent little opportunity here, I would say. Again, the times that he's played so far this season hasn't been great. He got 17 games, only, you know, only did well in three of them. Or only had three points, not, you know, you knew what I was saying. But the point that I wanted to make is that that's why we called up Sasha Chmielewski, who has done well since being given that opportunity. Now, the results haven't quite been there so far. Sorensen will be out. And it is going to be... Who, who is it going to be? Because Blickfeld works well on that top line. I mean, again, he had five points in eight games. I think I'm going to give Joachim Blickfeld the opportunity to really state his case for why he should be in this lineup still. There you go, Blickfeld. One hell of a chance. You're playing on the top line for the next month. That'll get you caught up to speed after missing as much time as you did. But just know that you are very much playing for your job right now. Your roster spot in general, you could be scratched. You could be traded it really does depend on how everything goes down. Despite the losses, we're keeping pace with the Canucks. We're only three points back, although Vancouver has a game in hand. So despite the injury to Pasternak, despite some of the lineup changes, and despite our, you know, our form dipping a little bit, we're still good. We are currently in first place in the Pacific Division. It is simply because the Canucks have two games in hand, but that shows where we are right now. Edmonton's a little bit further back, but no real surprise. It's us, Vancouver, and Vegas who just continue to slug it out for the top record in this division. We only have one game left this month. It's against the New York Rangers. We host them before we go to the totally not all-star break as we head into February. Pasternak is back. It's decision time. The easy decision is to send down Marcus Sorensen for now. That's probably going to be exactly what I do, so that way I can get a look at the lines. Sorensen was not claimed which in a way doesn't surprise me. Joachim Blickfeld. Jesus. 
He goes from 5 points in 8 games to 13 points in 17. Now he is playing with some good talent, but that shows that he has talent. On the second line, actually here, let's just take a look in general. So Timo Meyer, 24 and 23, very happy with that. Tomas Hurdle, 16 and 29. It's a little bit below the pace I'd like him to be on, but it's on his typical pace. He should hit 70 points this year. And then again, we already saw Blickfeld's stats. Dylan Gambrell, 9 goals, 23 assists. <sighs> he's on about the same point pace as he had last year. He's not a 50 to 60 point guy. He's a 40 to 50 point guy, which is okay, but still not quite what I'd want in a second liner. He is listed as a third liner, though, too. It's tough. He is too good to be on the third line, but not quite good enough to be on the second line in terms of point production. Logan Couture is still killing it. We left him as captain for a reason. I mean, he has 23 points on the power play. He's a monster. And then we have Cole Sillinger, who has 20 points in 51 games. Not yet, I think, is Sillinger's status. He's just not quite there. I mean, you look at who he's been playing with. He doesn't have the power play time. But, I mean, 20 points in 51 games. I mean, I guess you could say, well, if he had the power play time. As it is right now, the power play's a little bit screwed. Uh, Chemilevsky's on there. Chekovic is on there. The power play's a little bit messed up due to all the injuries. But I still just I don't know about Sillinger. Chekovic has 19 points in 51 games. From a defensive standpoint, it's a bit concerning, but he's on a 30-point pace. I don't hate that. Actually, what, what pace is he on? What did he have again? He had 11 points. No, he had 19 points in 51 games. So, I mean, yeah, he is on a 30-point pace, 30.5. So, it's not bad. Perfetti has 24 points and an 18 for Leonard in 51 games. I don't hate that third line. And again, Leonard might be a similar case where he might be wasted on the fourth line. Speaking of the fourth line, Alex Drew doing very well. True, Gregor, and Chemilevsky, I don't hate. I mean, Chemilevsky has the eight points in 26 games. He's on a 25-point pace this season, which is tremendous. <sighs> Somebody has to go. Somebody has to go, and we have to fix up the power play unit. Now, initially, I think it was Meyer, Hurdle, Pasternak, Gambrell, Couture, Perfetti. I don't know if I gave that time to Chemilevsky or not. And then defensively, Carlson certainly not on a 100-point pace, but he's still a point-of-game player. Carlo doing well next to him. Clefbaum and Nurse still about the same in terms of how well they work together. And then, again, Crystal Tang's been a monster on the power play. So breaking up... Breaking up these, uh, you know, that, that second pairing might be for the best. Defensively, though, I don't think we need to go out and get improvements. That is something that could be looked at, I suppose. Okay, first step here, aside from maybe looking at a better backup goalie, is scoping out who's available right now in terms of a potential top defenseman if we wanted to go that route, which we could, I mean, getting another top defensive defenseman next to Eric Carlson could be a pretty brutal pairing. By brutal, I mean brutally good. But first things first, Peter Morazic had the stats heading into the season. He just doesn't have them this year as Caroline ended up with Askarov and Walstead. But again, we already have our goalie. Uh, they also had Darcy Kemper who's making four million bucks next two years. I don't want to pay that. I'd need to get them to retain salary. He's not worth it anyway. Maybe Carolina is just bad, but he's not worth it. Colorado, no. Delia, he's doing well in the AHL, but that doesn't mean much to me. Columbus with Malcolm Subban. Not doing that well either. He's doing all right in the AHL at least. 36-year-old Tuka Rask doing well down in the AHL again. The goalie market does not appear to be that strong. It might be Jesper Elias in time. Gary Price, he has three years left. Oh, it's so bad. I wouldn't even take him on half salary. Jesus Christ. Although, you know, Gary Price on half salary. For the next three years. 
I couldn't do it. The only way I'd do that is if they had like a top prospect available that I also wanted to get because that contract has to be towards negative value. Big save, Dave. Four years left. Nope. Not even, not even entertaining that. Ottawa with Farrell or Farrell, I guess. What else do we have? Man, yeah, the goalie market's just not there. Uh, Markstrom in Toronto. One year deal. Five million bucks. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Vancouver with Lambert. Vegas with nobody. Washington has Callum Booth. He's doing very well in the AHL, but that's the AHL, and Winnipeg has nobody. Is there anybody on the free agent list still? If not, I think I might just call up Eliason to see how well he can do over this next month. Let me see, though. Are there any goalies who have a decent track record? Ugh. We're going to see what Jesper Eliasson can do over the next month. So that's sorted. Defense and forwards. Let's see what we got. Again, we are still neck and neck with the best of this division. I'm thinking Sillinger's probably done. There's the other clef bomb. Uh, I wanted to see. Is your Ola. Ola clef bomb. I just want to see what options are out there. Brendan Saad's on an expiring deal. 33 points and minus 16. Only fits it on the top line, though. And that's not going to happen because that top line's not getting broken up if it's healthy. Alex Petrangelo <laughs> with that. Oh, my God, he has an extension, too. Jesus, no thank you. Thomas Tatar isn't doing all that well. Doesn't fit in with our coach, so that's not going to happen. Buffalo, Petrano, and Edmondson, we're looking for major help if we bring in anybody. I'm talking major help. Jonathan Taves. Two years left. Colin Miller has five. No thank you. Columbus. Boy, yeah, the trade market right now is cold. Wow, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is there. We debated that before. Oh, look at how much we would have had to have paid him to keep him. I'm not really interested. He only fits in on the top line. I'm not really interested. Edmonton has nobody that I'm interested in either. Dowdy, Gardner, Nita Ryder, Jason Zucker, 32 points. Fits in on the third line. That'd be a really weird addition to the third line. And then Matt Zuccarello does fit in on the top six. Would I want to go with Zook? I mean, you look at that playmaking, you know, the puck skills category as a playmaker, and it's like, holy shit. And then Zucker as an addition to the third line, I mean, you would be talking about having to move two people out of the lineup, which I don't really want to do, but Zucker and Zuccarello, that'd be a hell of a one-two punch. Montreal has nobody, and as it is, Nashville might be the best option for us. Ryan Johansson, I'd want him on half salary. He does fit in with the team. We're not necessarily looking for a center, although we wouldn't have to play him there. I just think that's a bit too much money to be invested. The good thing about Zucker and Zuccarello is that they're both on expiring deals. New Jersey, nobody good enough. We could bring back Brendan Dillon. Anders Lee, but he has three years left. We're looking at Josh Bailey, who potentially fits in on the second line. I think I'd rather go for the double pickup from Minnesota, even though they're vets. Bushnevich is the top option there that I'd be interested in from New York. Ottawa, nobody. Philly, actually here, was it Saku Cuevo? Samu, so close, one letter away. Dom Cahoon, the German sensation. Eh, it doesn't really fit in on our team, though. St. Louis, nobody. Tampa, nobody. Toronto, Jake Muzzin, that might be a morale thing. Fits in on the third pair. And that would cause me to have to put Brian DeMoulin up. Which, yeah. I don't know if I like that. Shea Theodore, Jesus. What's up with that high of value? That's insanity. I'm not paying that. I can tell you that much. Eric Gustafsson, the Gustafsson. Fits in on all defensive pairings, but again, we don't really need another offensive defenseman. He, he's well-rounded, though. He could be a defensive option. It's just the question. is like, okay, are you that much better? than Carlo. I mean, I don't really know. He'd get the chemistry boost at least. Maybe playing next side, you know, alongside a fellow Swede. 
But aside from that, yeah, there really isn't much. I mean, Vegas, it's Eric Gustafson that I'm interested in. And Minnesota, you have those two forwards. But there's not much out there right now. Draft pick-wise, the Colorado pick, Carolina and New Jersey, all looking good. So, I mean, if you look at this defense, it's not that big of an improvement, and it's not as if Carlo or DeMoulin have been playing that poorly. We could keep Carlo. Probably, I'd probably be Carlo who would be scratched just because he doesn't fit in perfectly chem-wise. You know, chem and then forward-wise... I mean, it's just, you know, do we send down Sillinger, and then what the hell happens from there? Who takes a seat? If we were to also get Jason Zucker in a way to just go for it. We don't necessarily have to go for it this year, but improving our chances certainly couldn't hurt. But I don't, I don't think I'm sold on the idea of trying to go out and get help. I don't hate the way we're playing. Again, the big issue is that just somebody's... At least one person has to has to take a seat right now. Or, in Sillinger's case, could be sent back down to the minors. Hmm. This is tough. The funny thing is, we still have the cap space, too, to make a major move if we wanted to. So, again, Chemilevsky's been on a 25-point pace, if I'm not mistaken, just to quickly take a look again. Yeah, he's on a 25-point pace. I I can't really say he's underperformed. Sillinger is on about a 32-point pace. He's just not quite at that level yet, unfortunately. Alex True is on a 20-point pace, doing his job as a fourth-liner. Blickfeld, obviously, is on a tremendous point pace. And then Chekovic, Chekovic, call it what you will. He's on a 30-point pace as a four, or as a third liner, which is where you want him. And then John Leonard is on that similar pace. 28. So Leonard's a little bit behind where I'd want him. So I'm just trying to decide if if Zucker's the right guy. And then again, Leonard got bumped up to the third line. He's playing a different style. We had him as a grinder before. He's as a playmaker now. The issue is that fourth line is looking pretty good. It's been the addition of Chemilevsky that, that hurts it because we called him up just to see. It's like, okay, instead of Sorensen, how good are you? And now that might make John Leonard a little bit expendable. I wouldn't be against having him as a healthy scratch. But if you think of this team... And you have Chakovich, Perfetti, Zucker, and then like Zuccarello on the second line with Gambrell and Couture. The team certainly looks better. It should be performing at a higher level. It helps the power play with Zuccarello. It helps the penalty kill as well. It's just how expensive are we talking here? How expensive are we talking? And is it worth it? Where, yes, we do have plenty of assets to work with. Do we want to give them up, though? If we, you know, if it's marginal improvements. So, Gustafsson, the Gustafsson, what would you want for him? Our first next year, and the Anaheim second this year. Houston, who I'm not giving up. Benin, nope. Fratton, or Felino. Okay, so it's going to be that type of prospect in a second. Or we give up our first. A first and a second. Eric Gustafson. That's rough. And again, we'd be bringing him in to probably play a more defensive style next to Eric Carlson. And I just want to quickly take a look at how he compares to, say, Brandon Carlo, who we brought in this year. Yeah, I mean, the defense is about even. Carlo, I think, is a little bit more physical. Gustafson has that... Yeah, Gustafson has that offensive advantage, obviously. I don't hate this. If I could avoid it being that first-round pick, I think I'd be cool with it, because a couple of seconds is nothing. Especially with what we have. So if we were to go the Anaheim second and our second, how close would that be? Yeah, I figured it wouldn't be very. 
But two high value second rounders, I don't hate that. But you see the value that that pick has. Okay. What if we go with, now they wanted our first next year. What if I give you our first this year? Because I know it's going to be a relatively high draft pick. Our pick next year is a little bit more about, it's actually about the same. I'd rather give up our pick this year because we know we're going to play a playoff team. So what if I do that, but then give you, say, the Arizona third? Rejected. Okay, it would have to be a first and a second for Gustafson. A first and a low-end second, our two picks. What do you say? That would go through. He's really the only option out there. We could wait a little bit longer, but it would go through. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're bringing in Eric Gustafson for a first and a second round pick. That probably sees the end of Nick Jensen on this team. I'm going to see if I can get anything for him. And it might push Carlo into more of a defensive setting. Or if we run Gustafson on the second pairing, move, Nick, uh, move Darnell Nurse up to that second or up to that top line, put him in a more defensive role. And then we have Clefbaum and Gustafson on the second pairing. That could work out a little bit better. So, again, I don't mind giving up our first round pick. I hope it's as late as possible. And we still have other, you know, five other firsts. So what I want to do, though, because the alternative is sending him down, can I get anything for Nick Jensen? A third and Collimore, fourth and a fifth, third and a fifth. We'll take that third and a fifth from the Columbus Blue Jackets. So Nick Jensen's been dealt. I am going to go talk to, uh, to Minnesota. I want to see what the price would be for the double pickup of Jason Zucker and Matt Zuccarello. Although, without simming a day, was Donat Donato wasn't there before. Zucker has an extension, so that can't happen. Did they just change their trade block? Like, am I crazy? I'm pretty sure Ryan Donato wasn't there before. Zucker's not a possibility. Zuccarello works. Fiala doesn't. Ryan Donato could work on the third line, and he's turned into an amazing two-way. Let me look back through here really quickly, because I feel like some teams have changed their trade block, or at least Minnesota did, or I'm just losing my mind. Yeah, see, Jake DeBrusque wasn't there for Boston before. So I make a deal with Vegas and that changed the market? Because we haven't seen the day. Now all of a sudden Jake the Brusque is there. He only fits in on the top line though, so he's not a fit for us because again, that top line's not gonna change. They have Bergeron, who I, I don't wanna take away from the Bruins. Let's see, Calgary, Noah Hannafin. Jesus. I probably would've gone for Noah Hannafin over Gustafson. <laughs> It's too late now. <laughs> I, I'd get in trouble for flipping Gustafson. Jesus. This is highly unfortunate. I don't mind the fact that we picked up Gustafson, but damn. I mean, he is an improvement, but if you were to ask me for this team, who would be the better addition, Noah Hannafin or Gustafson, I probably would have gone for Noah Hannafin from Calgary. Obviously, Dowdy's still there, but he's not the fit we're looking for. I still don't hate the idea of Donato and Zuccarello rather than Zucker because I didn't realize Jason Zucker had the, uh, the extension. Hell, he might have just signed it. Nashville. See, I mean, granted, we wouldn't go for Yossi or Ellis because of their contract length, but yeah, they weren't there before. So these trade blocks absolutely changed in reaction to the trades that we just made. Jesus Christmas. Anton Lundell's getting a lot of money, so I guess with the moves we made, the Rangers decided to go full fire sale. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Maybe just a couple hours later, and they're like, nope, fire sale. Rube Hintz is there. He has had an awful season. <laughs> I don't really know how well he fits in on this team. Of course, he declined our offer to go to Pittsburgh. How's that working out for you, by the way? Not very well. 
Tampa. I gotta make sure that there's no extensions. Toronto. Austin Matthews. <laughs> Jesus. He fits in on the second line. <laughs> yeah, let's get second line rental. Austin Matthews, right? What about William Nylander? He fits in on my fourth line. And Mike Babcox for a decent amount of his career. It wasn't a decent amount. It wasn't very much. I know Leafs fans, calm down. I still think Minnesota might be the best trading partner here. As crazy as that is. There's one more check of Ryan Donato. Yeah, he fits in. So if we were to go Donato and Zuccarello. Oh my god, it reset me. If we were to go Donato and Zuccarello, holy hell, it just brought me all the way back here. And the menu lag is just out of control right now. <sighs> it, it just, it falls behind. It's like the game just doesn't know what to do if you hit a button in rapid succession. So what if we were to go for Donato and Zuccarello? It's a decent amount of money there. But what would your price be? A first, oh, two firsts in Heinenen, two firsts in Heinenen, or Alexi Evan Heinenen. <laughs> I can tell you much, uh, this much right now, you're not getting Heinenen. That's, that's not going to happen. That will not be happening. But I do think we could pull this off. It's just, is it worth it? That's the question. But again, I see this team, and it's like, okay... We can give up a little bit, but still be in a tremendous position down the road. I think giving up Zinger is the exact guy to give up because he's not going to make it. You know, that's a little bit cheap, but it's not my fault his value is that high. But he's not going to make it. There's no way. So we give him up. We're looking a hell of a lot better. And actually, I, I could get rid of a forward here. We can get rid of, well, really any of those options. Uh, see, we were to get rid of, uh, we'll send Cal Clutterbuck back to Minnesota. I do wonder if that would go through, because that would be a very inexpensive way. And while a certain GM is no longer the GM of the wild, you could see them doing this. Holy shit, that'll go through. I will fully admit this is a tad bit cheap because it's exploiting Zinger's value. But also, I don't care because I am desperate to win a cup with this team after we've already seen this team fail so many times. Zinger and Cal Clutterbuck to Minnesota for Ryan Donato and Matt Zuccarello. Add that to the addition of one Eric Gustafson and you can officially say we're going for it this year. Zachy Mon's going to be sent down. He'll hopefully clear. Jesper Eliasson's coming up. And defensively, that's good to go. And forward-wise, we are going to be sending down. Did I already send him down? What the hell? Am I am I blind? Okay, when I when I did the trade, it must have auto sent down. It must have auto sent down. Uh, Cylinder. It had to have. Which is why he's not showing up as an option to call back up. And if that's not what happened, I am going to be very upset. Although I do have the assets that I could, uh, I could make anything happen. We would actually be over the cap if I did that. That makes no sense. You know what? Fuck it. Whatever. Uh, we'll hold off on that. Let me go see if I can get anything for Peter Morazic. Yeah, we are, we are actually over, which is weird. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Morazic, you gots to go. And that would uh, easily save us the money. And again, you just saw, too, with the draft pick situation, we're still fine. I mean, yeah, you know, the trade for Gustafson, we gave up a little bit. We are still stocked with prospects, stocked with picks. We have a war chest in that regard. So adding these additions... Hopefully uh, it pays off for us. Fourth and a fifth, two fourths. Uh, go to uh, go to Philadelphia. Why not? Go to an Eastern Conference team. So we flipped Peter Morazic. Just wasn't happy with him. Didn't hold up his end of the bargain. Iman's going to be sent down. Hopefully for Eliason. Perfect. 
Perfect, perfect. So let's take a look at what this team is going to be. It might take a little bit of uh, flipping around, but that's, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I wanted it to be. <sighs> yeah, I think that's it. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Or maybe not. Who the hell is getting sent down to the fourth line? Ah, Chekovich is on a good point pace. Blickfeld's on a good point pace. Again, it seems kind of crazy to have Donato on the third line rather than, uh, you know, Zook. But Zook's such a good playmaker. He should do very well next to Gambrell and Couture. I don't want Cole Perfetti on the fourth line. Somebody's going to be on the fourth. Gotta be honest, I think Chekovich might be the sacrifice here. And we know he is a 30 point guy, but I think. Oh, you know what it did? It sent down Chemilevsky as well. Did he clear waivers? He did. I just saw him there in the AHL for a second. So that's what happened. It sent down Chemilevsky too. I thought someone else was missing, and I was right. See, so it sent down Sasha Chemilevsky as well. You know what? I'm okay with that for the moment. Because we do have certain combinations in mind that we know work. So John Leonard, who's a little bit behind the pace I'd like him to be at. <sighs> this sucks. I don't know who to use here. I mean, Perfetti Donato Blickfeld looks like an amazing third line. It really does. I, th I think those additions were fine. It just sucks because now certain people have to sit. Again, Leonard was a little bit behind the pace of every... I think John Leonard's fucked. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of what it comes down to. I think John Leonard's out. I'd rather go with Chekovich and with Chemilevsky. They've been on better point paces. Unfortunately for Leonard, you know, he made it to the team last year. And kind of crashed and burned in the playoffs. I think that's it for John Leonard. Whose name I scrolled past. We're going to see what we can get for him. And indeed, Sillinger has been sent back down to Junior. No trades for Leonard. Rather than risking, you know, rather than just trying to get rid of him or whatever. I'm going to try to send him down. If he clears, cool. If not, then whatever. I threw away a couple of picks. I don't really care. Right? I don't really have to care if I throw away a couple of picks here and then. <laughs> It'll uh, help out the AI a little bit. And Leonard made it through, so that's perfect. We know he's a decent option, at least. So I don't hate that. So if we go best lines, it does sit Chekovich by default, which is perfect. So power forward, sniper, playmaker, that's perfect. Playmaker, sniper, playmaker. I mean, yeah, Gambrell is a playmaker. It makes all the sense in the world. Hell, Gambrell is a power forward. He's not the biggest body, but he does have a bit of aggression to him. And Zook. Technically, what that line needs is a sniper. But I don't really want to break up that top unit. Like a true sniper. Like Couture... And Zook can get the job done, but that line does need a true sniper. I do wonder. Right wing playmaker, center sniper. I think I'm going to change Gambrell to a power forward and see how he does. Perfetti as a sniper, again, would probably be better as a two-way. He could be, because Donato's a great two-way. Uh, and he has slightly weaker face-offs, but better defense. And then Blickfeld could also work as a two-way. You know, I don't hate that. Perfetti, we're going to change over. Uh, let's... You know what, let's actually still keep Perfetti there. So, uh, Perfetti's going to be changed to a two-way. Donato is just going to quickly be changed to a left wing for the sake of best lines. And then Blickfeld, now this might, I admit be changing a bit too much time will tell that fourth line stays the same 
And then defensively, let's take a look here. So Carlson and Nurse just have a good chemistry to begin with. Gustafson works well there too. We're keeping Latang and Demoulin together. I don't hate the idea of having Darnell Nurse on that top unit. And then these two could both stay as two ways. It would only get a plus one. But they are about the same. I'd probably have Clefbaum as an OFD. So I think that's what we're going to do. Not that Darnell Nurse isn't good as a two way, but if I were to set Nurse to a DFD. That should boost the cam even more. So we have two offensive defensemen, two DFDs, and two two-ways. Looks pretty good to me. So let's go make those changes really quickly. And time will tell how well this works out for us. So Sillinger is out. Again, he's not bad. He's a member of this team moving forward. But when you look at how good this team has been thus, you know, thus far, it does make all the sense in the world to go out and make these changes to boost up our chances it's happened before and if it fails again then i am never buying at the deadline again and we will just consistently go with the players who brought us to the dance i think that's the best way to go about it so i'm intrigued by donato i'm intrigued by zuccarello both on expiring contracts unless i completely botched it. I didn't see either of them with an extension. I obviously saw Jason Zucker with an extension. So, I don't know. Time will tell, man. I'm honestly more nervous about this team now than I was when I started this episode because there is now the question over what this team is going to be where before we knew what this team was the hope is that they're going to be even better now because let's be honest they should be so gambrell is set last man to change is blickfeld and again he works well as a playmaker making him a two-way shouldn't necessarily take away from his offensive output it's just you know as a third liner hey be a tad bit more defensive that's all we're asking for the last change we got to make is Darnell Nurse being moved over. So that defense, compared to what it could have looked like if we decided to suck for the sake of being terrible, I mean, is this a contending defense? Yes. Is it a cup-winning defense? I don't know, but barring a brutal collapse, we're going to make the playoffs, so time will tell. I can only hope down the stretch we get slightly better backup goaltending from Jesper Eliasson who was going to be given the chance at the beginning of the season, but when I saw Mrazic save percentage, I'm like, yeah, I have to go with this guy and give him a chance. So the team is set. we got a plus three on that second line now. And then defensively, Nurse Carlson's now a plus five. Perfect. So two plus fives. And then Clef Bomb with Gustafson. The power play is going to be in here. Let me take a look here. So we have Meyer, Hurdle, and Pasta, we have Gambrell, Couture, and Zook, and Donato, Perfetti, and Blickfeld, True, Greg, and Chemilevsky. And then the defense is Nurse EK, Gus, and Clef, Latang, and Demoulin. So the power play, I mean, obviously, I mean, we're looking here, and if we just set this up as it would be. Let's see what we have. So I think in terms of the power play, we really just need Carlson and Latang if we don't want to use third liners, which I don't know if we do, because then we have Couture, Zook. We need Dylan Gambrell. Dylan Gambrell has to be on this team or on this unit. And then if we use third liners, we're looking at Donato and Perfetti, or we're looking... Uh, Gustafson and Clefbaum. And I think I'd rather use Gustafson and Clefbaum. Which I'm, I'm a bit surprised, but that, the thought is that we could then, after a, you know, after a power play, we can roll out that third line and they should just destroy. Like, they should be that good. Whoops, I already selected Gustafson. Sorry, thought I had selected the Clefbaum. So, there we go. And let's see what we're looking at here. 
So make that change. Let's get Pasternak on a strong side. And then between this, it's looking like a plus three. It's about the best that we're going to get. But Latang and Carlson leading the way on the back end. I like it. And then our normal power play, which <laughs> by best lines here, it makes it look like it's supposed to be a damn penalty kill. So thanks for that. Uh, we have Hurdle and Pasternak. Carlson will be with Gustafson. We'll have the Swedes. And then let's go with Logan Couture with Timo Meyer. That's actually perfect. And we will have Oscar Clefbaum with one Chris Letang. And that should be good to go. It's at least better. It'll suffice. The penalty kill is Gregor Donato, Perfetti, and True. That's perfect. And then Demoulin, Clefbaum, Nurse, Carlson. I don't mind it. Works for me. Works for me. Although, instead of Perfetti here, can we get Ryan Donato and then Noah Gregor? Bam. Perfect. And again, the goaltending. Pretty straightforward. Let's see what happens. So, Sillinger's out. Carlo's out. Chekovic is out. Leonard is out. But it's, uh, it's an interesting change. We dealt Nick Jensen. Some changes. Were they changes for the sake of change? Or were they changes... Will they ultimately be remembered as changes that messed with the chemistry? Time will tell, because I don't know the answer to that yet. I don't view them, though, as changes for the sake of change. You know, the intention was certainly to improve this team. Whether or not we accomplish that, though, time will tell. And as we just make sure that everyone is in that we would want to be in. Indeed, that's the case. Goaltending. Perfect. Let's do this. Let's sim the rest of this year. This team's good to go. We got our trades out of the way early. We're 30, 16, and 5 on the season. And it's time to see whether or not we can continue the streak of division titles as Ryan Donato bitches about how he's playing without ever playing a game for us. <laughs> so, at least the vote of confidence is there. Minnesota, what did you do to my beautiful boy's confidence? I miss him, but I do love Charlie Coyle. As David Pasternak is back to 100%. And here's the thing. If there are injuries, I feel fine. The forward depth that we have defensively, having someone like Carlo, who's ready to step in if need be, I feel really good about the depth that we have. The one concern, knock on wood, is goaltending depth, which is not surprising, as that... I mean, I guess, just in theory, though, you see a first-rounder go for an 81. I'm pretty sure that's Keandre Miller, but that it seems a bit... That seems a bit much. You know, I feel like the first... I feel like first-round picks are flipped too easily says the guy who had six first-round picks this year. <laughs> uh, Nugent Hopkins is on the move. He goes to Anaheim alongside Adam Ernie in a fourth for a first and two prospects. I don't. I feel like we would have had to have paid a hell of a lot more to get Nugent there. As Alex True goes down to injury, he's going to be out for about three weeks. Right. That could be the spot for Chekovic, but... He doesn't really fit in with that fourth line that brings a bit more physicality. You know who does, though? John Leonard, who I am now free to call up on a whim. So down in the AHL. Actually, here, I guess we'll fix the NHL lines first. Leonard is back. Sorry to Chekovich, but if there's an injury to uh, anybody in the top nine, the spot is yours. Leonard just needs to be made a grinder. And that line will be a fit. And uh, let's let's give Dylan Sakura a chance down in the AHL next to David Cotton. I don't want to fix the three-on-three -three lines. You fix the three-on-three -three lines like you should have when I replaced somebody with the person. Aiden Flurry, congratulations. If we go three-on-three, -three, I'm running you into the dirt. As we, I believe, are in sole possession now of first place in the division. We are. Same amount of games as the Canucks. Both of us have a game at hand on the Vegas Golden Knights. We are in sole possession of first place in the Pacific yet again. 
We have a long way to go, but we're right. Oh my god, the menu lag. We are right where we want to be. In contention for a division title for the fifth year in a row. Despite all the changes, all the talent that we've lost in the past 12 months. We are within striking distance of again being favorites in the playoffs, which unfortunately is uh, never really a good look for us because it often doesn't work out in real life and in this series for the Sharks organization. But we'll see what happens. Again, Leonard will be in on that fourth line. It should be a plus one, maybe a plus three. It's plus one for Leonard, Gregor, and Chemilevsky. So let's do this. Let's keep going. Alex True will be back, but hopefully we can keep up this pace. It might just see us be that much more successful this year as we're going to lose to Washington. Yep. Nino Niederreiter and Mitchell Reinke for a first. Albin Erickson and some prospect named Rowe again. Ah, I could see Nino going for a first. He's an 86. Although then when you have an 81, it's just, I don't know, man. Again, some of the trades... Like, right there. Like, Kaminsky better have damn good potential, because otherwise that's, that's a robbery for Philly. I mean, unless Timmons is a, you know, a, on an expiring contract. Doesn't even have to be a UFA. He could be an RFA. Although, at this age, I don't think Timmons would be. Doesn't make that much sense. <laughs> oh, my God, Pittsburgh. I'm so sorry. Oh, hints. You chose Pittsburgh over me. I want you to remember that, Rup Rupe. I want you to remember that you chose Pittsburgh over me. How foolish do you feel? It's a good thing you only signed for one year, bud. Because that is a mistake that you might not ever, ever live down. As we're continuing wins, losses here and there. I'm just trying to pay attention. Vegas went on a heater. Vegas is in first place in the division. This is going to be a tough stretch of games, man. Let's see. Johnny Leonard... Is looking, I mean, he's still looking fine. He's looking really good. I mean, the funny thing is, he's actually played really well. He's now on a 32 point pace, nearly 33. So his point pace has gone up since he's gotten, you know, called back up. So he's played very well since he got called up. And then Ryan Donato, tough to tell. Perfetti's plus minus. It's still, it's only a minus five. And then Blickfeld scoring might have dropped a little bit. Suk has those 39 points. Right. And then Myers, 35 and 30. Beast. Absolute beast. Let's see what happens here. Guarantee we lose to Pittsburgh in this next one. Nope, we don't. But we lose. Uh, we lose. We only win 5 to 4. Rather than losing. We are still winning games. We do lose to Minnesota. Vancouver and Vegas are both ahead of us, though. We have games at hand on both. Although not with the Canucks anymore. We are winning games hand over fist, but we're still not in first. This is unreal. We finally lose a game to Winnipeg before beating Vegas again. That is a crucial win against the Golden Knights, who were in first place, but are no longer. They are six points back. We are going back to the playoffs, but the division title right now is in doubt, as Eric Carlson might actually hit 100 points again. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> we are one point back of the Canucks. They have a game at hand due to overtime losses. We've been on a tremendous run of form this past month, or, you know, in this past month, and in this past 10, eight wins in that stretch. But it's going to take a little bit of luck. That win over Vegas was huge. They're not going to catch us unless we lose every game. But it would pretty much mean that we're taking on the Golden Knights. Right now, we're in control of our destiny. If we win the division, we're going to win the conference, which means Anaheim, Minnesota, or Winnipeg in the playoffs. If we finish in second, it's Vegas. We need to win this division title. Desperately. And the Canucks are two points clear on the same amount of games. We have four games left. The first of which is against Calgary, who are terrible this year and in terrible form, which really scares me because it's a road game and we kept the win in overtime. Huge. Oh my god, the last game of the year is against Vancouver. Holy shit, we are tied in points, but we need the Canucks to slip up. We play the Coyotes, who are outside of the playoff structure. This needs to be a win. Will it be? Damn it. Vancouver. 
Game at hand, we're both on 107 points. Our last two games of the year are against Vegas and Vancouver. The Canucks are two points clear. We need to beat Vegas in what could very well be a first-round preview. We have to win just to have a chance to catch the Canucks. Can we do it? A massive road trip to end the regular season. First period, scoreless. 13 shots to 6. Second period, let's go, Logan Couture and Eric Gustafson on Ben Bishop. We go to the third, up by two. Can we hold on? One more goal would be amazing. Can we hold on? Will game 82 be a game for the division title as we're trading power plays? If Knights get one on the power play, it's Nate Schmidt. Five minutes left. Timo Meyer, that should do it. Ryan Donato, that'll definitely do it. We do indeed beat the Golden Knights, like I said, in what could be a preview of that first round matchup if we can't pass the Canucks. Henrik Gustafsson and Eric Gustafsson both having very strong games. So the question is, did Vancouver win? We don't know yet. If the Canucks lose... That game is for the division title. If they win, we're probably screwed. And it's going to be the second half of a back-to-back -back for them, I'm sure. They're one point clear. If we win, we win the division title again. If we win, it is Winnipeg or Anaheim in the first round. If we lose, it's the Vegas Golden Knights.